Senator Famica, you ran last time partly on your background as a businessman who wanted the state to be more business friendly. What did you do in the last term in Hartford to try to bring that about? Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you very much uh, for having us here this evening. Uh, I worked hard in the first session that we had to try to reach out across the aisle and build relationships with both sides so that we had uh, conversations uh, to address a lot of the issues. A lot of the, a lot of the folks up there don't speak to each other. Um, the Republican caucus, both in the Senate and the House, worked on good budgets uh, that we put, I believe, four budgets together uh, that addressed what we thought were the issues uh, of the day, uh, that uh, did so without uh, new taxes or tolls. Uh, because one of the first things I think you have to do to address a business environment is to instill confidence in the government. And I think that's the first thing. And then regulatory uh, relief. Thank you. Um, and uh, your chance, uh, and you have 90 seconds. Well, so I, I think that with the business climate here in Connecticut, one of the biggest things that we need to focus on uh, is the fact that we don't have uh, the actual economy working for working people. Uh, the more people that we have working and making good wages, solid wages, middle class wages, uh, will actually have a rebounding in the economy here. I think that what we need to look at is how we can help people uh, try and achieve more. Uh, I think one of the ways that we can actually do this is through uh, passing a minimum wage uh, for $15 an hour. I think that we need to look at this. I think that uh, part of the business climate is the fact that I know from being on over a thousand doors uh, here in the district that a lot of people are not making off money to get by. And we need to address that. Uh, and uh, Mr. Famiki, you have up to 30 seconds. And um, it, it sounded like you, you maybe had difficulty uh, achieving some business friendly approach. So if you could kind of elaborate, if there were instances where you were able to uh, take that approach to Hartford, uh, you have up to 30 seconds. Well, I don't, I don't know that we had difficulty. We're in the minority up there, and the, and the policies of the longtime majority up there have made uh, the state less than business friendly. Uh, those, uh, those policies need to be reversed or eliminated in order to do it. So uh, we worked hard to try to put forth some good ideas to get in the room to have conversation, and I think uh, the best thing that we can do is speak to, speak to each other up there in order to achieve this kind of success. All right. Um, Senator, could you tell us your stance on minimum wage, just to contrast? Well, I, I kind of differ from a few folks in minimum wage. I, uh, I think the, the jury on minimum wage is somewhat out when you look to some of the major cities on the West Coast where they've actually increased minimum wage to $15 and seen job reductions. So I'm not sure that that's the answer. I'm not sure that an increase in minimum wage at this point in time uh, to the levels that have been suggested uh, makes a lot of uh, sense in the business climate we're in. I am in favor of a two-tier minimum wage where you have a uh, head of household minimum wage where people benefit uh, when they lead their household and then a second tier for students and other folks that uh, may not uh, have that head of household responsibility. And we'll, we'll provide another minute on this one uh, to give Mr. Henner with the chance at that his position on, on perhaps increasing the minimum wage. So I, I think the first uh, issue to address is the loss of jobs from the increase of the minimum wage. So right now, if you have uh, a person working three jobs at $10 an hour trying to make ends meet, if they end up going to one job at $15 an hour, that's a loss of two jobs net for the person, but they're actually making better hourly wages for themselves and more time to actually spend with their family, which we are seeing uh, people that are making the minimum wage right now are not teenagers. They are in their, their 20s and 30s, and uh, they're elderly retirees that are trying to supplement their income. Uh, I think that the net gain that we see from this uh, is evident. Uh, we know that small businesses, for the most part, actually pay more than the minimum wage. Uh, the minimum wage, for the, the biggest part, actually affects big business, and we need to address that. All right, thank you. Our next question is going to be for you, Mr. Henner.